Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. All right, so you know how you go shopping and you always get the shopping cart, right? And then you always wonder like, is it really clean? And then, what, you're, you're, I mean, you're shaking your head. I mean, do you, are, you these, are you one of these people who actually wipe it down? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you don't clean the cart? No. They give you the cleaning stuff right there at the door. You don't even have to put effort into it. I do maybe 50% of the time. If there's a line, I'm skipping it, and I just wash my hands when I get home. Okay, there's I, been a line at the oh white my gosh, of course. station? Yeah. Oh, no, I clean <laughs> it <white> up. Piece. <laughs> the white piece. The white station. <laughs> Yeah, we are talking about shopping carts. Well, the reason why I bring this up is that there are new shopping carts coming, and they're going to be called Capers. Capers. Okay. okay. So what it is, it's not your usual shopping cart. Is that, you know, like where you have like that little basket where you put the little stuff in? Yeah. Or the or your purse. human. Yes, or a human, a small human, <laughs> is, is that that's where it's going to be loaded with now ads. And oh my so gosh. if you are, for example, going through the vegetable aisle and you pick up tomatoes, that maybe it's say you might want some vanilla ice cream to, to go, go with, with those tomatoes. tomatoes. Sure. Okay. And Classic pairing. Yes. And so they say that they're going to be tracking your buying habits and where you're located in the store. And so, you know, cause they tried to do like the whole coupon thing, yeah. but that did not work. No. So now they're just going to be doing targeted ads. You t- speaking of ads, you told us about the fire stick and how the fire stick now has ads on it when you load it up Correct. a couple of weeks ago. Right. Well, I told my kids about this and I said, there's one way to avoid them though, is that if you open an app before the ad starts to play, now it is a game in our house where we turn on the projector and they're like, father, I'm out before the ads. (laughs) Well, they're going to hate the grocery store. (laughs) They are. Exactly. They're going to be sitting there going, I don't know why I'm sitting here. I can't stand the ads anymore. (laughs) You know, speaking of shopping carts, uh, Barry and I were driving down Thomas Road right in front of the Home Depot there by 40th Street. Mm -hmm. Right. And there was a guy with a shopping cart, and it had a ladder on the top. And so uh, Barry said to me, "Do you think he asked to borrow that shopping cart, or do you think, <laughs> no. or do you think he, he actually borrowed the shopping cart, the ladder?" <laughs> All right. Well, that's what he said. Do you, do you, do you think that he actually you're like bor- borrowed the shopping cart, or did he steal it? And then I said to Barry, "It was the ladder." <laughs> I didn't know you were setting up a dumb joke. (laughs) Well, there you go. And on that happy note, welcome to another episode of Kim Commando Today. It's your weekly fun podcast. We talk about all things digital, of course. I'm Kim Commando. And then joining us, we have the A-team from the Commandoverse. We're talking about, well, first up, Allie Seligman, our amazing content queen. What do you have for us, Al? I'm going to tell you about a very, very expensive tweet that just happened. Uh, And then some of the changes I've made to my tech for this year because I'm sick of being annoyed by it and I want, you know, to not get sucked in so much. You know what? Sometimes you are just annoying. <laughs> because, well, God because, forbid I try to better myself, Kim Commando. It's Happy a, New Year! Because <laughs> it's like, this is what I did. And you're probably doing like yoga every day. And I am doing yoga every I'm approaching one year of yoga every day. Every day? Every yes. day. That is impressive. Thank you very much. Okay, I hear, And some I, days it's only five minutes. Sometimes right, it's good. just a little stretch. It's but fair. Yeah. Okay, see, I thought I would do like Bible in a year. Okay. How'd that go for you? What was what's Bible in a year? Oh, it's Father Mike Schmidt. It's wonderful. Every day he reads a Bible verse, then he tells you what it means. Okay. Okay. And so the whole idea is you get through all fifty-two books in the Bible within three hundred and sixty-five days. Right. So I so I started on January first. Where'd you get to Genesis two? <laughs> So far, she knows that there were uh, birds created, mammals. <laughs> On okay. Sunday, so- he rested, huh? <laughs> okay. Interesting concept. You be nice, okay? <laughs> you just called her boring. No, she called me annoying. Oh, that's right. All right, I got through one day. I'm going in a year. All That's right. incredible. So now I'm like, I was thinking on the, uh, this morning, I'm like, okay, so I got to double up because otherwise if I don't double up quickly, it's going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to be in like revelation. It's the 12th. You need to quadruple up. Yeah. All right. So All right, what do you have for us, Andrew? For we yes. are, uh, we're officially four years. This isn't concept. We are four years away from being the Jetsons. Oh. Just four little years. Okay. Ooh. Okay. We also have some big news about this podcast. Do we? I don't think we should tell him right now. Andrew, we shouldn't tell him right now. Please. <laughs> no, let's let's wait. Yeah, let's we wait. We gotta a build bit. the anticipation. Exactly. It's a tease. Anyway, that was just a tease. Good one. 
Uh, so let's get started with the news. So this past week, I thought this was interesting. You know who Jodie Foster is. Of course. Of course, right. Well, she told The Guardian that uh, she was talking about Gen Zers and working with them. She said, I'm not a fan. These are her words. <laughs> what a take. <laughs> They're really annoying, especially in the workplace. They're like, nah, I'm not totally feeling it today. <laughs> I'm going to come in at 1030. Is <laughs> she wrong? <laughs> okay. Uh, not really. In emails, she said, I tell them this is all grammatically incorrect. Did you not check your spelling? And Ooh. the Gen Zers are like, why would I do that? That's kind of limiting. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> These words can be spelled any way they identify as. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this word better identifies with four T's, not just two. Exactly. See, we have that. But speaking of Gen Zers, um, if you want to actually text with the Gen Zer, there are now new rules. Okay. I'm not making this up. This is not a joke. Okay. Can Re you remind me what Gen Z, what, uh, how old are they right now? Oh, early 20s? I, why don't you look it up, Al? But I know, yeah, it's like early 20s. Okay. Ian is a Gen Zer. Okay. Oh. Mid to late 90s. That's when to they were born. To 2010s. Okay, that's when they were born. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so a uh, new report found that Gen Z thinks that capital letters are, you ready for the word? Ugly. Ugly? Mm-hmm. Gross. In texting. I Get totally them out. I disagree. And if you text in full sentences, it's too professional. You, you only do that if you're upset or really mad. Yeah, what is this? A, a Is this an email? A resume? Uh, no, text. Text. No, I know. I'm, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, and if you text in all capital letters... You're old. Well, that means you're yelling, though, right? Mm. Only old people yell. Gen Z doesn't yell. Get they off my lawn just doesn't look the same if it's in <laughs> lowercase. Please. With a happy face <laughs> and a thumbs up. <laughs> hey, speaking of emojis, uh, the peach emoji is offensive to them. Peach emoji. And it's sexual, right? Uh, yeah. Well, it's used to describe a plump behind. Right, yeah. Of course. Okay, What's the, where's the offense? I don't know. A plump behind is a great thing. I agree. You know, Gen Z, it's a it's a different, you know, I sometimes when I talk to Ian, I feel like, oh, I'm really old. Because, <laughs> you know, because when we were on vacation over the holidays, obviously you spend a lot of time with each other. Sure. And then he said, can I have your phone? I said, sure. And so he's over there like just going crazy on my phone. We're sitting there by the pool. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I am removing every picture of me off your Instagram account. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm like, why? He's like, because some of the guys are grabbing the pictures and they're making fun of me when I was 10 or 12. But oh isn't that gosh. your photo time capsule? I know. And he said, well, he goes, I didn't delete them. I just archived them. Okay. I was like, oh, okay. So they're hidden from the public feed. Exactly. I, yeah. Exactly. I wouldn't have known how to do that. Uh, so good for him. <laughs> Way to go, millennial. That's a W. And then no, he, he's Gen Z. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And then he also had likes on some of my photos. He likes said, from his friends? No, just the number of likes. He said it's cooler if you don't show the number of likes. Oh, like, like, okay, okay. They didn't know. They don't want capitals, but they're worried about being cool or not with likes. <laughs> no idea. Yes. Jody Foster was right. <laughs> So um, here's one that you can tell your kids, Andrew. All right. Okay. What is a cow emoji called? What is a cow emoji called? I don't know. It's going to have a moo emoji? or something. Yes. An emoji. emoji. Uh, yes. I want my kids to think I'm funny, so I'm not going to tell them that one. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so what do you have for us in the news, Andrew? So at CES 2024, Hyundai released a start date for their air taxi. <gasps> dum, yes. bum, bum, bum. Air taxi. They released the concept a couple of years ago, 2022, but this is the final concept. It has eight propellers and it's, what is it called? A V lot. It's an electronic vehicle that can take off and land yes. vertically. Vertical, okay. Yes. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. It's got four seats and a driver, but the plan is to have no drivers in the future. And that's where all your luggage will go where the driver sits. Sure. And it's going to go from hubs in the beginning in 2028. From a hub in downtown to a hub at an airport. It can go 120 miles an hour. And takeoff and landing is no louder than your dishwasher. <gasps> really? Yes. Wow. So the goal is, obviously, to be able to land in residential areas, at non-hubs, parking lots. Would you get in an air taxi and go from your front yard? Yes. Let me finish the sentence. <laughs> I'm so excited about these. <laughs> to the mall. <laughs> No, I wouldn't go to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> it goes 120 miles an hour. Like I said, it can go 40 miles in one charge, which obviously that technology in the next four years is going to get way better. Mm -hmm. But 
you're going to be able to skip over fi- an hour worth of downtown traffic in just 15 minutes? That's a tough question because every time I go to New York, they always have down on, on the Hudson, they have the helicopters that sure. can take you from, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. up into Midtown or wherever you want to go. I've never taken one, but yes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I look at those things and I always think of like, there's always the helicopter that crashes somewhere in the city. Okay. And then there's the helicopters. Like I won't, when we go to Hawaii, I won't go in a helicopter. Yeah. Because that's just Well, a and really thing. these are kind of the closest to helicopters, right? Right. But yeah. it's way safer than in a helicopter. Everything is, it- is going to have multiple redundancies because obviously they want these to have a lot of wear and tear and a lot of use. The eight propellers are not needed to fly it. It can fly on just three. When you get up in the air, the propellers, instead of facing up and down, they invert to forward, and that's how you fly like an airplane. But only four of them are working when you're going 120 miles an hour. So if something happens, you're going to have, like I said, redundancies and everything. There's going to be a backup. I got the heebie-jeebies about helicopters as well, but this looks super safe to me. Oh, I want I would do it. I would okay, do I'm it. not going to be the first one. I'll be the first one. I'll do it. And you I don't second? even like heights. It's only 1,500 feet. Okay, that was my question. Do they fly at the height of, like, helicopters? Yeah, 1,500 feet above the ground. Okay, if you fall out of that, you're going to hurt yourself. I'm just saying. That's true. (laughs) Well, buckle in, Kim. (laughs) Open the door. (laughs) All right, so if anybody is listening now and you work for Honda or in their PR department, uh, be sure to contact Andrew and Allie. They would love to go for a ride. Absolutely. I'm afraid of heights as well, but this thing looks super safe. Okay, have you gone in the Waymo around Phoenix? Yeah. I haven't just because I, I, I'm not scared of it. I just haven't made the time to, I'll do it. Sure. But the thing that scares me about the Waymos is they're dumb. They are stupid. (laughs) These cars don't understand. There was a police officer standing in front of one trying to direct it. The car didn't know what to do. I saw that. So it just shut down. I saw. And guess what was behind it? It 10 more Waymos that just shut down. (laughs) Oh gosh. I didn't know about that. I was, was, Barry and I were like on 40th street and McDowell or something like that. And a cop, there was an accident and there were like three Waymos just like sitting there like, well, I don't know what to do, dude. What do I do? You know, like. So I think in four years, though, these uh, these Hyundai high flying taxis will be a little smarter. And they'll be able to know if it's a bird, just kill it and keep flying. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. What do you got, Al? Uh, this very expensive tweet. I don't know what to call them anymore. Are they still tweets? X's. X's, X's. posts, whatever. So the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, they had a tweet about this huge Bitcoin ruling. We'll get to that in a minute. And it wiped out $17 million in value in just a few minutes because the account got hacked and the tweet was fake. Okay, Uh, so we're all on the same page. The SEC is supposed to rule pretty soon on whether Bitcoin EFTs are going to be listed on securities exchanges. What that means essentially is that you don't have to have any special account to go buy crypto. You can just do it where you buy your normal stocks. You can open up Vanguard and buy Bitcoin. You okay. mean this unregulated currency is going to become regulated? That is what I mean, Andrew. <laughs> okay. And so this is huge news, right? It would change the value of Bitcoin. It would be really big. Well, you, did you watch? Did you follow the value of, of a Bitcoin when the, it went from 4600 ah. to forty almost 4800 And then once they found out it was fake, it dropped all the way down to like 4400 Right. Exactly. So this is what happened. So that tweet went up. Or 44000 Excuse me. Yeah, very quickly, Gary Gensler, the chairman, said uh, from his personal account, nope, that wasn't a real tweet. Um, it had a little graphic that looked like it was from them. It was really professional. It looked well done, right? So people believed it. Well, how did this happen? Uh, the SEC didn't have two-factor authentication <laughs> turned on. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Security and Exchange Commission. <laughs> uh-huh. You're telling me did not have 2FA? No. No, Kim, they did not, which is hilarious, <laughs> right? So hilarious. Uh, another little funny they part really of this. really need to listen to this podcast. It's truly insane. Um, back in October, one of their tweets, which is so fun to read right now, careful what you read on the internet. The best source of information about the SEC is the SEC. <laughs> is it? Didn't age well. No, it did not age well. Clearly, they're going to be a bigger target than you or me or Jim in Detroit, who's listening. Hi, Jim. Um, but still, you need to make sure your account's protected, right? It's a little difficult because now you only get two-factor authentication if you pay for the premium version of X. That's not something that you can get if you're just, you know, a peon with a regular account. What do you do? Make sure you have a really complex password, right? It's not one you use for your other stuff. There's also something called password reset protection. We're going to put this in a newsletter so that you can see all the steps there about how to do it. This is a good thing to do. 
uh, it essentially says, here's my number, here's my email. If somebody tries to reset my account, send it here. So we'll tell you how to do all that stuff um, and why I recommend that you should have a separate phone number for that stuff. Because if I'm pretending to be Kim Commando and I want to log into her account, I know her phone number. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yes. Uh, bad news. So <laughs> for it X. <laughs> Again, so, I was rich on uh, Bitcoin for about uh, 22 minutes. 22 and then minutes, I was poor yeah. again. Is that you know, insane? I, 17 million dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, I'm still holding on to my Ethereum. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just in case. I still have my Dogecoin. Do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I will tell you fun little crypto story. So my husband has he's into crypto and NFTs and art and all that stuff. He had this coin that he got. It's called Airdropped. When essentially they're trying to get it out there, and so they just send it to people for free. Um, it went from $600 in value when they first dropped it to him. And I think it's at like 18,000. Oh my God. Sell. And this is just like free stuff. Sell it. He's a write it out kind of guy. We'll see what happens. How do Sell I get it. somebody to give me something like that? Right. I'm turning on my airdrop on my phone right now. <laughs> awesome. Enjoy your malware. Hey, listen, coming up, um, I've got a scoop on how to get some free movies on YouTube. Uh, Andrew, your Gmail was hacked. Is that what I heard? It was. I was hacked and I caught the hackers in real time. No. And I thwarted them. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. And Allie, you're going to talk about Instagram? I am in a stupid thing you should stop doing on Instagram. Excellent. We got that and a whole bunch more coming up. So stay right where you are. Hey, Allie was just talking about our newsletter. You might be sitting there saying, Oh, what newsletter? I didn't know you had a newsletter. <laughs> How do I sign up for the newsletter? Well, fear not, dear heart, because you can. <laughs> you can join about a half a million folks who get our newsletter every single day, and you can sign up over at getkim.com. Once again, that's getkim.com. And I have a little graphic, okay? And it has three numbers on it about our newsletters. And I just, these are the numbers over the last month. Okay. okay. So we have 29,928 thumbs up Ooh. for our newsletter. Nice. Okay, that's 91%. Uh, we have 2,280 folks who just say, mm, it was okay. All right. Okay. And then we have 665 people, you know who you are, 2% who give a thumbs down. The two percent, the two percenters. So sorry, I did that. Oh. I'm with those thirty thousand thumbs uppers. That's I know, awesome. That's nice. Who thumbs well, downs anything. Have you even signed up for the newsletter? Because I mean, I remember we got that email. I forget who it's from. We said you should just be fired because you don't get the newsletters. Let me simplify this. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Good talk. And Bye. He still hasn't been fired. Okay. Uh, if you want to not be like Andrew, and you can go to getkim.com. Once again, that's getkim.com. All right. So, gosh, how much are you spending in streaming? Oh, my gosh. I think I've cut almost all of them out. Really? We're not watching any TV right now. So I went ruthless and I canceled them. And I'm so annoying because <laughs> I did that. You are so annoying. <laughs> <And> your husband? <laughs> no, that if was he sells Kim. that coin, you guys can afford to stream some stuff. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I have Hulu Plus Live TV. So are you counting that as my streaming? Yes. yes. All right. So I'm like at 115 a month. Okay, the average person is spending $110 a month. Oof. Look at me. You're so average. Yes. Show <laughs> average. That's right. So over at YouTube, uh, actually Maddie did this research. and She found at YouTube you can watch a lot of classics for free, like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, Rear Window, oh. Vertigo, uh, Life of Pi. That was a great movie. Um, the Truman Show, L.A. Confidential. Now you will see some ads. Uh, also, they now have this whole public domain section on YouTube. So like... Classic films. Steamboat Willie's now Love in that. there. Oh. No, it's not Steamboat Willie anymore. It's horror, Steamboat it's Willie. It's horror, because they lost the copyright right. on that. Yes. Because he's in the public domain. Yeah. So you can go watch that first. I know they're making, they made a Winnie the Pooh a horror movie the minute he went into public domain as well. That makes sense. The shirt and no pants thing. Yeah, he's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. And it was like a really weird poo thing. <laughs> no, yeah. Just saying. No, no. Yeah, he wasn't good looking. <laughs> no, it was bad. It was bad. Don't Definitely don't want to search that with the kids. No, no. no that is not a kid's friendly one. But my Rear favorite, Window is a cool movie. My you favorite television Window. show is actually on YouTube. What is it? It's called Taskmaster. It's from the UK. I have friends that are obsessed with this show. The UK version and the Australian version are very good. The American version is garbage. Uh, but there's 16 seasons on there, every single episode, all for free. One of the funniest shows I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my gosh, I love that. Taskmaster. So, what's it about? So there's a panel of comedians. There's five comedians. Okay. And then Greg Davies is the Taskmaster. Okay. 
He has an assistant. His name is Alex Horn, and they give the comedians tasks. So how many eggs can you crack underwater oh, okay. and not lose a yolk in 30 seconds? <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, I'll have to check it out. I would definitely recommend it. Starting season three, they learn their ways in the first two seasons, okay. but it's such a good show. Love it. All right. So tell us a story. You got hacked. Right. Like I said, I have Hulu plus live TV. And on New Year's Day, during the second football game, college playoff game, Texas and Washington, I get an email that a new device is logged into my Hulu account. <gasps> I was like, well, that's weird. So I text my ex-wife. I'm like, are the kids doing Disney Plus or something? Because I just got this email. And it's all packaged and bundle upon bundle. And she's like, no, everybody's playing games. No one's watching TV. So I jump over to Hulu, log in real quick. And they have a section on Hulu of your devices. Yeah. Right. Click on the devices. There's the two I have in my house, my Xbox and my Fire Stick, and then one in Flagstaff, one in Yuma, <gasps> one in Missouri, oh, another one in Flagstaff. So you can right there on the webpage, deactivate them. I deactivate them all. Go change the password. Problem solved, right? No. <laughs> because they didn't hack my Hulu. They hacked my Gmail account. Oh. They went no. on to Hulu then sent an email to my Gmail to change the password, successfully changed it. And when I hit refresh, it logged me out <gasps> of Hulu. Yeah. Oh, so I had to then change the password. Now we're doing battling passwords. I have <laughs> to change year. the password <laughs> yeah. on Hulu. I do in time before they can do anything. And I change my Gmail password, log back into Hulu. I still have now six devices i deactivate them and i'm just sitting there just refreshing just i got gotcha. you you can't get in my <laughs> gmail you're not going to do this to me again i literally sat there for a half an hour refreshing to see if they got back oh in. of course yeah but once i changed the gmail password they had no access they kept sending themselves the email yeah. to change the password so i had gmail on one monitor hulu on the other it was it was definitely an effort i had someone zoom in i mean it was like one of did those did you feel like hacker man i absolutely did yeah and they kept sending themselves the password well they thought they had access, but the password to change the Hulu password, because they really wanted to see the end of the football game and log <laughs> back in. Oh, gosh. But since I, I secured the Gmail, they had no longer had access. Isn't that crazy? It wasn't someone who was trying to like get into your bank or do this or do that. They just wanted to watch some football. Right. That's all. And I, you know what? <laughs> I should have let him. You know. <laughs> yes. I mean, why not? You know, like you're a football guy. I mean, have some sympathy and but empathy. I, I felt like such a, a superhero yeah. that I caught them in real time and I ruined their New Year's Eve. And I'm sure they were using <laughs> VPN. Yeah. That they really weren't in of Missouri, no. Yuma, or Flagstaff, and they were somewhere in the other part of the world. Uh, but yeah, I caught them in the act. Good did, for you. Did you feel like like putting on a hoodie? Oh, yeah, I definitely, like I wanted someone to engage and zoom in. <laughs> enhance, I, enhance. I, exactly. That's a, <laughs> I loved it. It was fun. I know I I was, all it. my personal information is now on the dark web, sure. but it was fun in the moment. Oh, it already was. Yeah, oh, that's good. What a great way it's to fair. start a new year. Yeah, that's I awesome. won. Uh, <laughs> that's you won. It. All right, what about you, Al? Have you two seen those viral Instagram stories people keep sharing where they put so much information about themselves? It's like, it's almost like a Mad Libs where you fill in my shoe size and my kids' names and my pets and my everything about their lives. Stop doing these if you are doing these. Not you two. I know you're not. But uh, I'm seeing them everywhere in all of my feeds. This is not This is not a, a Gen Z thing. They don't share that kind of stuff. This is definitely like millennials and older, right? So if you see these, yes, it's tempting and fun to fill things like this out. But don't. Is this like a get to know me thing? Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. And they go viral, right? And so people see them. Oh, my friend did this. And there's an easy little button where you can click share mine. Don't. It's too much. It's too much information. And I'm not even thinking about the fact that, yeah, this is probably bad stuff for like some creep who's trying to stalk you or a hacker or whoever to know. But just in general, I don't think we need to put that much information no, on the I internet. Don't think so. no. I see those on Facebook too, the 50 questions. Yeah, yeah. And people put their hometown, it's their like maiden so dumb. name. Same thing. I mean, might as well just put your social security up there. Exactly. Yeah. Dummies. Yeah. So before you think, um, let me share my whole life with the internet, everyone can see that. Act as if anyone could see it. Now, what about if you share like your eyeball? Well, Kim. Because <laughs> I shared my eyeball. You did. shared your eyeball? On Instagram, yes. So, oh, after your surgery. Well, I just, I put up a new picture of my eyeball yesterday. It does look kind of crazy, the lines in there. Yes, and you can see the stitches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because um, I had the cornea transplant mm -hmm. in May, and so people have always been asking, like, you know, how's it going? And and I got, was in an accident, that's why I needed the transplant also. But 
Anyway, so I posted a picture so that you could actually see where the stitches have been removed. I have like 14 stitches around my eye in my, you know, on my cornea holding that sucker in. Yeah. And so they took. <laughs> but I thought you got the stitches out. No, I got, I got two stitches out. Oh. There are a lot. Progress. Yes. Yeah. And, and then I'm going back this week to get two more out, hopefully. You're going to have to go seven times and they do two at a time? So annoying. That's and awful. I, and, I, <laughs> and I even said to Dr. Aldavi, Tony Aldavi, we're like friends now. Sure. Okay, hey, know. Tony. Hey, Tony. <laughs> uh, is like, I mean, I thought this was like, you just come in and like you take them all out. And he like, he looked at me and he's like, I know you're a triple type A personality, but that's not how this works. <laughs> but why? Why can't they just take them all out? Because there's no blood circulation on the cornea. And so the healing takes a long time. He said kind of like, you know, if you were to like hurt your shoulder or something. Yeah. That there's, there's, so it just takes a long time for it to heal. So it's how not long like a until bone. all of them are out? What's your time frame? Uh, 2027. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right when Honda, uh, you can take your air taxi to get your last <laughs> oh. two stitches out. Like, yeah, but I will tell you that it's, it's an amazing feat of technology. Right? Sure. I mean, and thank you to the donor family. I don't know who you are. Yeah. Uh, but it was a, a man who died in his 40s with a, of a brain aneurysm. That's all I know. Oh. Okay. Um, but I went from 2400 to 2070. And so I was on vacation this past week, as you know, and like, cause I haven't gone on vacation for like a year and a half. And so I went with um, Ian and Barry and my sister and my son-in-law and we went to the Bahamas and uh, I played golf. Now I've been playing golf for a long time and I've always been like a crappy golfer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and I, and I cheat. Okay. Uh, you know, and I'm, I would like, you know, sometimes like I'll throw the ball when nobody's looking. Oh, that's, not that's not cheating. That's not cheating. That's golf. Yeah. Wow. And I, you know, I tee it up in the fairway and I've always had this excuse, like, you know, I'm handicapped. I only have one <laughs> eye. More. Okay. Oh my God. I sit there and I whap the hell out of these things. Oh, it totally helped oh. your game. You can see. I can see the ball. Imagine oh, that's that. awesome. Two eyes. I know. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And oh. when my brother-in-law, he's like, every time, like I would just stand there and go, Poof. And like whether it was a pitching wedge <laughs> or a sand wedge or whatever it was, he's there and like, and he's a golfer. Mm. He's like, Dang! <laughs> I mean, like, and like, like, then I was I was hitting it further than him. <gasps> but that has to, your strength has nothing to do with your eyes. Well, no, but she can it's see just the ball. The contact. I know I can see the ball. I'm making yeah. contact. Oh, with I love that. that. LPGA, watch out! Here comes Commando. <laughs> uh, I'm going to Dubai. They're paying a lot more <laughs> money are. over oh, that's there. True. <laughs> okay, we're just doing that. All right, I have a what the heck headline you're not going to believe. Really, it's about Mark Zuckerberg and beef and macadamia nuts. Crazy stuff. Uh, we have some letters from our listener mail. And Al, what are you going to do for your tech life upgrade? Oh, you know, the thing that makes me really annoying. I'm going to talk about some changes I made to my tech this year uh, that I think you guys are going to like. Maybe you'll try too. And then maybe I'll be annoying too. Maybe. We hope so. <laughs> Excellent. All right, stay right where you are. All right, this is not the Kim Commando show. This is the Kim Commando Today podcast, which we are going to be making some major changes. So if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure that you do that right now. Should we talk about what the change is yeah. right now? Okay. Pay off your tease. Okay. Pay it off? Yes. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't like drag it on more and more. This is two weeks running now you've teased this thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Here's the deal. We're going Monday through Friday. Yay. What up? Okay, yes. And so uh, it's actually live on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, which, you know, we've never promoted the YouTube channel. No, ever. we haven't. Ever. Yeah. We've the never. subscribers prove that, that you haven't <laughs> promoted it. No. Yeah, we're doing okay. You know, right. But imagine if you actually put yeah. some exactly. push behind it. I know. Yeah. We have almost 80,000 subscribers. Right. So it's like. Oh, well, maybe we should do something like this. <laughs> okay. So if uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, head over to youtube.com slash Kim Commando and hit that big old subscribe button. And here's the reason why is that when new episodes get released, you're automatically notified. So that's the big deal to subscribe. No, Frank in New Jersey, it doesn't cost you anything. And some guys say, <laughs> well, how much does it cost to subscribe every time I turn around? <laughs> Somebody's asking me to subscribe for something. Because that's how Frank talks in New oh, Jersey. Oh, of course. Yes, uh, yes. Frank, it's totally free. So uh, so Monday through Friday, the gang's all going to be here. Uh, Allie, you'll be joining us on Fridays yep. as we Andrew and I get the groove on. And then we have some interviews coming up, which... 
<laughs> the so peop- excited. Oh, the people we have. Do you know who we have in- scheduled? Yes. Okay. They are some crazy people. One of them I've seen constantly on social media. And when I see him on social media, I honestly go, what a douche. And now I get to talk to him. But, yes. but he's not one at all. No, he's no. actually really interesting crazy, and cool. Right? I know. This is a guy who's, what is he, 48 now, 47? And I think then so. he's getting blood from his son. Well, he did that before, and now he's changing technology and the medical so that he can become actually younger, and he's done it. Yes. When we're talking to him. He wants to be as biologically young as possible. It's crazy. But if you think about that, if you think about someone that's taking the blood from a 17-year-old, you're automatically going to think, is this a villain from a vampire movie? Oh, 100%. (laughs) And he looks like it. He does. But he's actually really cool. I I want to know all about it. Then we have the cyborg lady. I don't know about this one. I haven't been sent this one yet. She has the most implants like chip implants and all kinds of implants in all kinds of places. Mm. <laughs> like tech all in her body. How does she get on an airplane? That's going to be my first question. Mm, That's a great that question. Uh, then we have the guy who, who's actually setting up backups on the moon. Oh, cool. So that this way, why put your backups on the moon? Because you know what? Safe from fire, theft, and flood, <laughs> uh, earthquakes, nuclear disasters, yeah. AI, aliens. Sun going out. Something like that. That's really cool. And if you're thinking, Kim Commando, I don't have time to sit and watch YouTube. The cool thing about YouTube and a a show like this, you can have it open in a tab while you're doing your other stuff and just listen. You don't have to be staring at the screen the whole time. But it's also then going to be posted on this podcast. It sure is. That's right. Yeah, you can listen wherever you want. So we are everywhere all the time. Monday through Friday. You can love it. Yeah. All right. What the heck headline? Mark Zuckerberg is now a cowboy. Okay. Giddy up. Wasn't he a ninja a couple weeks ago? Yes. Oh, he still is. Yeah, but he broke his knee or something like that. So now he's changing. Uh, you know, he's got that big, let me see, how many acres? 1,500 acre ranch on Kauai. And uh, he said that now he's going to be producing some of the highest quality beef in the world there. Better than Wagyu and Angus or whatever it may be. Uh, he's going to be feeding his cows beer and macadamia nut meal. Oh, Okay. Same. Uh, he says each cow eats between 5,000 and 10,000 pounds of food a year. Are, uh, okay. So is this like fattening them up so that it's very marbled meat? Yes. Okay. But this isn't like feeding the poor or oh, being no. a philanthropist. He just no. wants to have really fancy meat. Right. Exactly. Is the okay. meat to sell? Exactly. Can I buy a meta steak? I'm sure you could. Huh. I wonder if there's tracking technology <laughs> built in Oh, there's that. a chip in that stake, yeah. <laughs> there is a chip. Uh, meanwhile, you know that he is also building that underground bunker there. Oh, my gosh. 5,000 square feet under the ground. Well, the cows may need some shade, and they'll just head on down <laughs> to the underground bunker. Yeah, that's what it's for. They need that, a cow basement. Make, makes you wonder what he knows, though. Everything? <laughs> yes. All of it? Too much. Okay. Uh, okay, and now it wouldn't be complete if I didn't give you a bad joke. Right. Which we're eliminating in the new podcast. (laughs) We are not. (laughs) Dang it. Okay. (laughs) He tried. Did you know it was illegal to laugh very loudly in Hawaii? Did you know that it's illegal to laugh very loudly in Hawaii? I didn't know that. Why? (laughs) Can you be more enthusiastic, please? (laughs) Sure. I didn't know that. Why? (laughs) When you're there, you got to keep it to a low ha. Oh, no. You sure you want to keep those? (laughs) Okay. Um, uh, all right. So here's our letters from our listener mail. Um, I think, Andrew, I think you should go first because this is a very, it's long. All right. Well, I'm going to read that whole thing. Yeah. It's it's very long. Wow. Very he long. wasn't prepared for this I much. Wasn't. I wasn't. No. I didn't until now. And I didn't want you to read it beforehand because it's a very interesting, interesting email. All right. The whole thing. Here we go. Hi, Kim. Really like you and your A team on the podcast. I want your opinion about something. I'm a single dad to my 12-year-old daughter. A few months ago, she got diagnosed with leukemia. It's been difficult, to say the least. But my daughter is very strong, and she's been fighting hard. The biggest challenge has been getting to her to eat. She has very little appetite for about a week uh, or so following the chemo. The main things she'll eat are mashed potatoes and popcorn. Yesterday, I decided to take her to the grocery store to see if there's anything she could possibly eat. My daughter was wearing pajamas and a hoodie and a winter jacket, and she had a beanie on and her hood up, so I couldn't be able to see that she had no hair. Some woman said to her husband, Ugh, I don't get kids and parents today letting their kids walk around in pajamas. I would never let our daughter do that. So I turned to the woman. I said, Excuse me, do you happen to have a daughter? She said, Yes. I said, So you wouldn't even let her wear pajamas even if she had cancer? Because that's what my daughter has. 
I saw the lady's face drop. And then I said, well, we better get going and try to find something that my daughter can actually eat right now. I told a few people about what happened and they said I was being a jerk and I should have just ignored them. What do you think? Wow. Wow. I told you, I told you this was a really interesting, heart-wrenching email. Yeah. Okay. So the people, his friends that are being critical of him, I don't think they get mm. how vulnerable yes. he is right now. I mean, yes. he's looking at his 12-year-old daughter thinking, Who's, is she going to make it? Yeah. This could be, he could be shopping for her last meal. And I don't mean to be dramatic. No, but truly. But he truly could be. Yeah. And mind your own damn business, lady in the vegetable yes. department. I am 800% on the dad's side on who this. Ca- Even too. if she didn't have cancer, who cares if she has pajamas? Doesn't matter. Right? People wear no shoes and yoga pants on an airplane. And we're going to worry about a young <laughs> kid in pajamas at the grocery store? Yeah. It's your own business. Also, for her to be able to hear her dad defend her from some jerk. Of course. Yeah, you know, I didn't think about that. That's an interesting yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. You know? you, I'm totally on his side. Yeah, he adds no shame to her, to her going around trying yes. to hide the fact that she's going through chemotherapy. Yes. But yes. his friends, those aren't friends. Those aren't friends. Those he aren't needs friends. to dump those people. Seriously, yeah. they should be yeah. more understanding. Yeah. 100%. Well, um, I I just, when I got that, I was like, oh. I know, I'm all chicken, chicken you know? skin. Thanks for making me read it. Appreciate it. I almost teared up. I know, I, I yeah. It's, it's hard. heartbreaking. It is yeah. heartbreaking. We'll be thinking about both of them. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. All right, Al, what do you have? Okay, first, um, I wanted to do a little thank you because we have a reader who sent us a note that said, I love this newsletter. I want to send you something to thank you. You don't have to talk about it. You don't have to promote it. I just want to send you this. So he runs a coffee roaster in South Dakota. It's called Cool Beans with a K. Nice. (laughs) And he sent us some coffee. I have an espresso maker at home. So I took it home and I made some espresso for me and Mackenzie who works here because she got the whole thing together. It's so good. Nice. So, Kurt, thank you for the coffee. That was really sweet. We appreciate it. Um, now, is that why you had four shots of espresso? Yes, it is. <laughs> Have you noticed yes. that Ellie's speaking very quickly? She was just supporting our listeners. I thank was. You. Thank you yes. so much, Kurt. Okay, I have one from Joan. Every so often, I don't receive your daily current. Oh, Joan, which oh, we'll get to in a minute. No. But she said, is there some place on your website where I can go to find previous issues? That way, I won't panic about not being able to read that oh. days. Joan, I love you. That's so great. See what you're missing, Andrew? I was just thinking about getting a free cup of coffee. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, Talk that's about fair. Yourself. I'll make you some next week. Thank you. Uh, if you go to commando.com, so at the top, there's a little yellow button right in the corner that says latest issue. So you can click that and that's today's. Or you can go to commando.com slash archive and that's all the newsletters from all time. So easy URL, commando.com slash archive. You can see everything from the past there. And then I have one more. Uh, Ronald, I've been getting phone calls from people who want to buy my house. It's never been on the market. Should I be worried? I get these phone calls constantly. Do you two get them? I yes. called my real estate. It was so bad. I called my real estate agent and I was like, am I on some list? Did you like check some box somewhere? <laughs> Cause I'm getting like six a day. Yeah. Okay, if you did, please stop. He's like, no, it's just these big lists that go around and exactly. everybody buys them. And yep. when everybody buys them at the same time, you're going to get all the calls at the same exactly. time. They're cold call lists. Yeah. So it's someone who all that information is publicly available, right? That you own a house, what your phone number is, where you live, all that stuff. So no, it's something to be worried about. Nobody's trying to scam you. They really want to buy your house. Yeah. Uh, so have that if you want to sell your house. But no, it's it's nothing to really be worried about. Or it's someone who just wants to create the lead to then sell to someone else that this person is actually interested in buying the house. That's true. Or if you That's answer true. the phone and talk to this person, they know, oh, look, a living, breathing person yes. who has this phone number. <laughs> now you're on 50,000 more lists. Yeah. Great yeah. job that was, right? So if it's a number you don't recognize, uh, don't answer the phone. Don't answer it. That's what I do. All right, let's see. I have two. Uh, this is from Richard. Uh, great newsletters. Thank you. I read in there that Bluetooth has a wonderful range. Is that what my Chevy fob is operating on? Yes, that is on Bluetooth. Love That's that. why we say like, you know, put it in a aluminum foil box yeah. your, could you, so that this way nobody can steal your truck. Uh, okay. Now this is from Mark Sterling. Okay. Ooh, called out full name. You know why? <laughs> Wait till you Come see it. Super positive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, actually it's funny. Uh, Kim, here's a joke for you. I love all your jokes. <gasps> Thank you. Last Ooh. name deserved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have one for you. <clears throat> Who was the first computer operator? It was Eve. 
she held an apple in one hand and a wang in the other. (laughs) (laughs) Well done. (laughs) Well, well done. Thank you, Mark. (laughs) That's good. Mark, have you heard of Bible in a year? Yes, exactly. (laughs) Hey, listen, coming up, Allie has a great tech life grade that I think all of us are going to want to be. We're going to want to use that. Uh, And then I have a great, I have some great jokes at the end. You know, one of the things that I didn't say is that when the big event is actually going to happen. You know, so when we go five days a week here with Kim Commando today, live on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever you get your video feeds, as well as wherever you get your podcast, uh, the the big date is, you ready for a drum roll, please? That was really great. It's better than what anyone else was doing in here. And free. It's yes, true. I was going to say, when we get sponsors. No, you're going to have to pay for the rights to that. <laughs> exactly. I actually uh, trademarked and licensed that. <laughs> That's awful. Uh, <laughs> it, that's going to be January 22nd. Woo! Yes. All right. So tell us about your tech life upgrade for 2020. Now, this isn't crazy stuff. This isn't do yoga every day. It's a couple easy little things that I think make primarily my phone less of a time suck and less annoying. I put my Instagram timer back on. I get 10 minutes a day. If I go over that, I get locked out of the app and I am truly committing this time to not changing it. Um, yes, there are times when it comes up and I say Ooh, 45 minutes or whatever it is, but no, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Um, I hid some of the apps that I default waste time on, right? So like scrolling through Amazon to look at stuff to buy or offer up. That's a big one. I was going to say, I was, I was just going to say it yeah. has to be offer up. It with is. You. So you can make it so that instead of like when you, you have to search for the app, basically, you can't just go through your list of apps and it's right there. You have to search on your phone. So it just adds this mental barrier of like, do you really want to do this? Do you really want to go look at crap on offer up? But isn't that how you open your apps regardless is searching for it? Uh, Cause that's how I do it. If I want to go to anything, I just pull down the search. Start the stuff I it. use the most. No, I have okay. it on my home screen. Gotcha. Yeah. So for me, it's a little barrier, right? I put a book on my phone. This is something when I was trying to quit Instagram the first time, well, you still pick up your phone and want to look at something, right? Okay, so I put the Kindle app and a book on my phone. And so that way I have something to look at or something to do. You know, you're waiting in line, whatever it is. So instead of, oh, I just scrolled for 10 minutes and now I hate myself. I have a book. Something beneficial. Yeah, look at that. Um, and then one more. I was listening to this podcast about sleep. Uh, it's a science podcast. And there was a study. So they told a bunch of people, you got a really bad sleep score on your Fitbit or whatever it was. And then they had to take a test and they performed worse. Then they told a different group of people, you had such a good sleep score. Oh, gosh, really? They performed better. (laughs) All of this was made up, Placebo. Yes. So if you wake up and you look at, I wear a Fitbit, and you look and you see, oh, my sleep score was a 62. This is going to be a bad day. It will actually influence your day. So I don't look at it in the morning. Maybe I'll look at it later, but I'm trying not to let that be anything that I take as fact because eh, we also know that they're not very accurate. So have you ever looked down? I mean, have you ever not looked and you had a great day and then you Absolutely. Look, and then you look on your Fitbit and it's like, oh, you should have had a crappy day? Yes. Yes. That's fascinating. I know. This is what we do. We create an app that no matter what, it just lies to you and tells you you had a great sleep score. Every night. Okay. Because then you're just going to have great days I every know. single time. Yeah. And you're going to love the app because the app's always <laughs> telling you you had a great sleep score. I don't know what a good sleep score is. It's like 40. Oh, that's terrible. That's true. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, uh, you know, like an AB, you know, like, like school. You want above a 90? Oh my gosh. That's good. If I get in the 80s, I'm thrilled. Truly. Really? Yeah. So our fake app just tells everybody they're 94. So every how, day. We, how do we make money at it? Ads. Uh, sell the data. <laughs> yeah, there that, we that's go. what everybody else that's does. That one's easier. Yeah. All right. Uh, I feel like I can do some of those things. See? It's not I that do. bad. Yeah, and I'm sorry I said you were annoying. That's okay. You're I'm amazing. a little bit annoying. It's fine. It is. <laughs> All right. So um, I have three bad Elon Musk jokes. Three. Oh, good. And, they, and they're quick. Okay. Uh, if Elon Musk's space company establishes a Mars colony and you have a girlfriend on Mars and you break up because of the long distance, she's going to be your... SpaceX. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, you knew that one? <laughs> well, I mean, I listened. I figured it out by listening. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. How about this one? Uh, Elon Musk has a new plan for Mars colonization. It's going to include only registered Republicans. Okay. It's going to be a red planet. Oh, oh. I thought you could figure that one out. 
Okay. All right. Finally, this one. All right. One more. Uh, Tesla founder Elon Musk is originally from South Africa. Sure. Which is kind of strange because you'd think he was from Madagascar. Oh. Mad at Gascar. Get it? No. Mad at Gas Car. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't tell my favorite Elon Musk joke that you make. Which one's that? You could have one better than those? <laughs> well, How is that possible? Well, before he started Tesla, he was just Lawn Musk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's great. Yes. I, got the, I stole that from Kim. Can we edit that to make sure that's the one Kim tells? <laughs> make that the first one. No, it's okay. All right. So we're super excited. January 22nd, the big change happens. Uh, love to get your comments and feedback. You can send us a note over through the website, hit commando.com, hit the link that says email Kim, or you just want to send us a, an email to podcasts at commando.com. And we've been hearing from a lot of simps at that address, by the oh, way. Still simping. Still, Still simping. Still simping. Do you have the winner of the iPhone? Oh, uh, Let me well. put that on my to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not that you forgot the name or anything. You still haven't even given oh, it no, away. No, no, we have. We oh, have. okay. We have oh, picked that, the winner. Oh, we did do that. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. We yeah. did, but we don't, I don't remember who, I don't know who it was. I know the person's email address because it was kind of a weird email address. Yeah, we shouldn't read that. Though. No, we don't no. want to. Oh, it's <gasps> already been shipped and received. Okay. Well, did, congratulations. Did you get a person? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. I saw the email and the person said, it's great. They got the pink one. They love it. Everything's set up. You don't remember their name and you're trying to turn it on them that they haven't said thank you yet? <laughs> <laughs> I shipped them the phone. Yeah, sure you did. <laughs> I was the in phone the has been shipped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and on that happy note, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.